keep staring at each other, or are you going to invite me in? It's just that I wasn't expecting anybody. If you don't mind my asking, what can I do for you? You need money. I need your investigative skills. I mean, I no longer do detective work. But do come in if you want to. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Blake. Sophia Blake. Mr. McPherson, I need you to investigate a case that is dear to my heart. Just name your price. I haven't investigated in a long time, miss. I really need your investigative skills. I will pay all your expenses. an interesting offer. What exactly was it? Mr. McPherson, you've been in Paris for some time and I need your help. Only you can investigate this case. I'm ready to pay anything. Could you give me any more details about the case? At the moment it all seems rather nebulous. You probably haven't heard about the Orfe case, Mr. McPherson. The newspapers have kept it quiet. A couple of American tourists were brutally murdered. They were my sister and her husband. I want to know the circumstances surrounding their death. These murders were committed in Paris. Do you know whereabouts in Paris? A hotel in a chic part of Paris in the 8th district. The Hotel Orphée. They arrived there about a week ago. They were found dead in their hotel bedroom. Are the police handling the case? If they are, it may well complicate things. Do you know the name of the inspector in charge of the investigation? The detective in charge of the investigation is named Lebrun. You know, the police are the same in every country, Mr. McPherson. Whether you're in New York or in Paris, you mustn't be in a hurry. Lebrun is no exception. I don't get it. I've never worked for you before, not here nor in New York, yet you come to me and ask me to find your sister's murderer. Why me, Miss Blake? Your reputation, Mr. McPherson. I find your nickname Spooky to be charming. I have friends who know people at the Pinkerton Agency in New York. The suspicion surrounding you is totally unfounded, naturally. You are the man I need for this investigation. Discreet, capable of seeing beyond appearances. How did they die? Are you sure they were murdered? It may just have been a terrible accident. The Whites were found decapitated in their hotel room, Mr. McPherson. Your sister and her husband, they were both American. What exactly were they doing in Paris? I was supposed to meet them in Paris. You know, Mr. McPherson, visiting Europe was my sister Ruby's childhood dream. With Mr. White, her wish came true. They were so very much in love. To be honest, I'm not sure I should take the case. Firstly, because where there's a murder, there's a murderer. Inspector Lebrun is in a better position to arrest murderers than I am. Mr. McPherson, I have no faith in the police. 
The 8th District Police Station, Le Brun especially, is trying to hush up the affair. All they care about is keeping their reputation as a chic area. I don't want to seem overly interested, but why don't we settle my fees before we go any further? This case may take you several days. I'll give you 500 straight away and 500 per day of successful investigation. Your offer is very reasonable. I accept. I owe you a lot, Mr. McPherson. Much more than the money I'm paying you. You'd like me to begin right away. I think I have all the information I need to begin. You're sure you haven't forgotten anything? The police didn't find any items of value in the room. Yet my sister and her husband traveled very comfortably. In luxury and with old family heirlooms. It was a passion they both shared. It is risky traveling with large sums of money. It would be a shame if they'd been killed for that reason. How valuable were these family heirlooms? An old relic of no value. My sister was very fond of it. Of no value whatsoever. I hope to have results quickly. I'll be in touch with you when I've made some progress in my investigation. Goodbye, Miss Blake. I ask only one thing of you. Be discreet. The police must not suspect you were involved. If you'd like to meet me... I'm sorry to disturb you, miss. Can you connect me to the post office, please? I'd like to send a telegram. Right away, sir. Post telegraph, go ahead, please. I'd like to send a telegram to New York, please. The addressee is one J. Wells of Pinkerton's National Detective Agency, number 57 Broadway. The message reads, need information on woman named Sophia Blake. Stop. I've made a note of it. It will leave this morning. Done. suitcases are heavy and do not forget young man the elevator is still out of order oh brother What can I get you, sir? My name is McPherson. I'm a private detective. You really are a private eye, just like in the movies. You've even got the hat, and you're American too. Huh. Private Dick. Do the police have a suspect? I told them what I knew. I definitely saw someone by the window all evening. That is my testimony. They can do what they like with it.
Can you tell me any more? You know I would like to help you, but I think you had better deal directly with the police. A man named Lebrun is leading the inquiry. Thank you. You're welcome. Sir? Give me a bottle of red. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orphée. My name is Isidore Petit. What can I do for you? Good evening. My name is Gus McPherson. I'm a journalist for the Clarence de Paris. Could I ask you a few questions concerning the death of two American tourists? Name of White. That's it. White with a Y, not an I. Sir, you work for a vulgar little wag. Your newspaper is a, a hodgepodge of lies and innuendos. I'm sorry. I'm not employed directly by the Clarence. I'm a freelance reporter. Those newspapers could not care less about the damage they cause. Such words tarnish the reputation of our establishment. Who will want to rent that room now? Was it true what they say about the whites? Were they really just American tourists here on a visit? That is right, except that the Whites did not behave as tourists. They arrived on the 8th and, uh, if you will pardon the expression, left feet first on the 12th. In the intervening period, only Mr. White ventured out. And ventured out is something of an overstatement. Mrs. White did not leave the room for the whole stay. Were the Whites always alone in their room? The Whites received no visitors during their stay here. They were adamant that they should not be disturbed, which is why I refused to give their number to a man who asked to see them the night before their murder. A man came to see the Whites on the night they died. Did he introduce himself? Do you know his name? Some cunning devil that was asking too many questions. Rather like you, actually. With the description you've given me, I'll be able to draw myself. I'm something of a painter, too. You are looking for a description with which you are going to produce a sketch, is that it? Well, I cannot wait to see this. The man was French, Parisian, in fact. No spectacles, no. Small, dark, rather wide eyes beneath large, thick eyebrows. Wide mouth, thin lips, a boxer's nose, solid build. A strapping lad. Typical working-class type. If you want any more information, contact the police directly. I'm afraid that I can do no more for you. The front desk clerk will not like to see me going upstairs alone. I must find a ruse or persuade him to come up with me.
Are you quite sure, Mr. Beauvais, that you have not seen him? Yes, yes, I'm sure. Go on, Mrs. Elwa, go home. We will take care of this, I promise. Oh, thank you, Mr. Beauvais, you're so kind. The next time I'm at Cézanne, I'll bring you back a nice bottle of red wine. That's a promise. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. Ah, a little bottle of red. Come on, next. Can I help you? My name is Gus McPherson. I'm a private eye, private detective. I wanted to ask you if you'd be willing to answer a few questions and help me in my investigation on the Orfe murders. A private dick, I see. Well, you'd better show me your license. A license? Uh, I didn't know detectives needed a license. Where can I get one of those? I will let it pass. This time. Private detective. You must be working for someone. Who hired you? It's just that... My client pays me very well to keep silent. She's very fond of her privacy. It's going to be hard to help you in these conditions. What if you were a little joker, huh? The Orfe case is not in your league. Just a helping hand so I can launch my investigation in the right direction. That way we will not get our lines crossed. I don't want to impede your work in any way. Forget it. Mm. It is baking in here, isn't it? You would not happen to have anything to drink, would you? Just one for the road? Full of promises and empty-handed, huh? I do happen to have a little something for you. An amazing bottle of red wine. I cannot say no to that, officer. Don't you feel a little thirsty? Tai returns. Goodbye. Yeah, right. Goodbye.
The Private Eye Returns. Am I right in thinking Inspector Lebrun is in charge of the investigation on the White case? Would it be possible to meet with him? That way we can compare our information. He is not seeing anybody. Just make a statement. When I read the file, I noticed the name of a certain doctor, Frank Kofner. What can you tell me about him? Dr. Kofner is our expert. Forensic scientist and above all, psychiatrist. The sort of guy who prefers the company of madmen and corpses to the likes of you and me. You don't seem to be overly fond of Dr. Kofner. Is there any particular reason for that? The chief of police himself imposed Dr. Kofner on us. It's not going to help matters any. I've read the police report, but I'm sure you can tell me a little more. What are your impressions on the White case? This case is pretty messy. A foul murder, unclear motive. If Inspector Lebrun needs a hand, he will ask me. For the time being, he is managing on his own like a big boy. That is all I know. Of course, if Inspector Lebrun is surrounded by guardian angels like you, he can't be making much headway with his investigations. If he's not making headway in his investigation, it's his own fault. Lebrun is bending over backwards trying to find the mysterious visitor the Whites had that evening, just before the murder. He's not even cross-checking the statements. All right. Could you at least give him my name? McPherson. Gus McPherson. And tell him I need to see him as soon as possible. You have a picture of the suspect? That is all LeBron needs to go on. Goodbye. Yeah, right. Goodbye. <laughs> 